Greetings, friends around the world. This is Bible News Prophecy Program. My name is Alexander Sashavelic. Well, this past week you might have heard about five red heifers that Israel finally found. And you might have heard of the Jewish year 5783. Well, what do you make out of all of that? You know, that's a good question. There is a Protestant Michael Snyder. He posted the following. Is it just a coincidence that five red heifers have arrived in Israel as Jewish leaders prepare for a new Shemitah cycle to begin? And he says a major prophetic event just happened and hardly anyone in the United States is talking about it. In recent years, a group of Western Christians known as Bonne Israel has been working with officials from the Temple Institute to search for a perfect red heifer. A red heifer is necessary if temple sacrifices are to be reinstituted, but one hasn't seen in Israel for more than 2,000 years. In any event, the stage is being set for the time when the Antichrist will step in and cause sacrifices to cease halfway through the tribulation period. And I think that it is very interesting, this writer says, that these red heifers have arrived in Israel just as Jewish leaders are preparing for the beginning of the new Shemitah cycle. According to Jewish tradition, a new seven-year Shemitah cycle will start at sundown on September 25th, that was this past Sunday. At that moment, literally the entire nation of Israel will shut down as Rosh Hashanah begins. Will this be the Shemitah cycle when we see sacrifices in Jerusalem resume once again? If so, this also be, this, will this also be Shemitah cycle when the Antichrist steps in and puts an end to all those sacrifices? Well, this was the question that this author, this uh, Protestant author posed. Well, there are certainly biblical answers to those questions. Brethren, for animal sacrifices to be stopped, as prophesied in Daniel 9.27, Daniel 11.31, and Daniel 12.11, they must first start. While I'm not convinced that a new Shemitah cycle is about to begin, the Feast of Trumpets, which began with sunset on, on this past Sunday, began really, indeed, at that sunset. And we could expect to see prophetically significant events in the coming year 2023. Related to the Herod heifers, well, we here in the Continuing Church of God, we have put together a Bible News Prophecy video on our Bible News Prophecy YouTube channel, as well as on our BibleNewsProphecy.net. We have put the audio portion of which was sent for broadcast on the on this very European Gospel Radio station last uh, a couple of Mondays ago, and uh, we broadcast and we said. Five red heifers and year 5,783. You see, because the Temple Institute announced that those five perfect unblemished red heifers have arrived in Israel from the USA on September 15, 2022. Uh, Kanan Kupitsky, an Orthodox Jewish teacher, pointed out that last year was 5,781 in the Jewish calendar, pointing to the year these red heifers were conceived 5,782 is when they were to arrive in Israel, and that the year beginning sunset September 25th, 2022, is supposedly 5,783, which is supposed to be the year of Red Heifer Redemption. Well, the question is, is that correct? Is that the correct year, Anno Mundi, year of the year, or is it 5,989, to 5,992, more in line with history. Now, what about the claimed Shemitah year? Shemitah year, something that you might have heard from the various Jewish cycles or Messianic Jewish cycles. Well, might the appearance of a proper red heifer encourage the Sanhedrin to begin regular animal sacrifices? Might political considerations result in the resumption of animal sacrifices? Does the Bible show the animal that animal sacrifice in Israel will be stopped? Yes, we said it does show. Does possibly having a red heifer mean that a massive Jewish temple is about to be rebuilt in Jerusalem? Do Christians need the sacrifice of Jesus or the blood of a red heifer to be purified? And how close do we seem to be for Daniel 9.27 to be fulfilled? Uh, we put the answers to all of these questions in our five red heifers and uh, heifers and year 5783. Dear friends, we're getting closer to the time when Daniel 9, 7 and 11, 31 will be fulfilled. 
that will be going to be fulfilled because they prophesy about the resumption of the Old Testament sacrifice, of the morning and evening sacrifices that the Jewish people are going to indeed resume doing. Now, as Daniel 9.27, let me remind you what that is, what is the significance of that as far as the biblical prophecies are concerned. Well, as we have already warned you in the past, the coming nuclear regional war in the Middle East is about to break out. It will be a war between, on one hand, the state of Israel, on the other hand, Iran and its closest ally, Syria. The prophecies show from Isaiah 17.1 that Damascus, the uh, capital of Syria, will be completely destroyed. The prophecy also shows that uh, Iran, uh, pictured in Isaiah uh, 22 as Elon, is not going to fare well. There will be four winds from the war, four quarters of the world. And they are going to indeed scatter the Elamites, Iranians, into four corners of the world. And also, we see from uh, Isaiah 22 that the supernatural protection that God has been having over the state of Israel and its capital, Jerusalem, is going to be indeed removed. And uh, there will be a certain war destruction uh, ensuing from that coming regional nuclear war in the Middle East. Now, of course, as you can well imagine, the coming nuclear war in the Middle East is going to be upsetting the whole world. In the last century, the Middle East was considered to be a powder keg, an area where any conflict can indeed escalate to a worldwide conflict. And with much worries and anxiety, the whole world's eyes were, eyes were fixed on the Middle East. However, that has changed now in our 21st century. Nowadays, we get so focused and warped up when some local conflict does arise, like the one so-called special military intervention in Ukraine, etc., etc. And therefore, when this Middle East nuclear conflict happens, it is going to upset the whole world. And it will be an opportunity for Europe to achieve what it has wanted to achieve for a quite long time. And what is that they want to achieve? Well, they want to push the United States of America out of the Middle East and eliminate the Middle East as American sphere of interest. Europe has always wanted now to meddle into the Middle East and to exercise its own dominance in that region. So therefore, as a result of military nuclear conflict in the Middle East, the European megastate is going to send its own peace envoy, its own peace negotiator, with the goal that he is to broker the peace deal as prophesied in Daniel 9.27. Yes, this man will be of German origin, that is for sure, and this man will be a man who will be a diplomat, but as a result of his success in brokering the peace in the Middle East, He'll be celebrated around the world as the savior of world peace and uh, for th that merit he's going to become the president of the United States of Europe. Or better put, he's going to become the dictator of the United States of Europe. From all the things that we have seen in the Bible, particularly in the prophecies of the book of Daniel, we in the continued Church of God have been drawing your attention to a political leader called of German origin and he is now uh, 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 he is now a political commentator on R RTL uh, television network in Europe his name is Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg he is a man who has a very interesting political biography and also he is a man with very 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 rich international experience so he'll be most likely the one if he is not the one, then it will be somebody else. But whoever will be sent by the European Union to that troubled region will indeed, you can rest assured that he'll be, he is and will be the prophesied European dictator. So it will be most likely Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, the one who will be sent by Europe to broker the peace. As far as we can read in Daniel chapter 9, verse 26 and 27, the peace, he will confirm the covenant, meaning the peace, the peace covenant, this politician, most likely Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, he'll sign and confirm the covenant for seven years. Because we have a prophetic week in uh, Daniel chapter 9. A prophetic week has, each week has seven days. 
And therefore, there is a principle in the Bible that one day represents one year. That is why he's going to broker the peace for seven years. He's going to confirm the peace covenant for seven years. And then what? Meanwhile, the peace is still there enforced. Most likely as the consequence of that peace will be that the Jewish people will be allowed to resume or to reestablish the uh, sacrificial system from the Old Testament. It will be part of the peace. Now, of course, that is not going to make happy the Arab world, but, you know, as the one of the peace stipulations, one of the peace clauses will be that the Jews will be able to practice uh, animal sacrifices because they believe that it is important for their temple and they believe it's part of their national identity. Meanwhile, the peace is in force and forced. This European dictator, again, whoever it would be, but we do kind of draw your attention to Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg because over the past decade we have been following his political career and we have noticed how he has fulfilled certain prophecies written in the book of Daniel. So this man in these, during those first three and a half years will be plotting and using the peace deal, plotting to develop his military strategies. One of his military strategies would be to conquer Jerusalem, to destroy the state of Israel, and to also move his headquarters, indeed, to Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is considered to be very important. And from a nominal Christian point of view, is considered the holy city where the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was, was having its own earthly ministry and performing many, so many miracles. So therefore, this man as he is called the son of perdition and the man of sin in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, this coming European dictator, who brokered the peace in the Middle East, will be plotting his own conquering of the state of Israel on one hand, but also since he is a German, and since the Germany was twice defeated by the Anglo-Saxon world, he'll be conquering also how to, and contemplating how to destroy the Anglo-Saxon world. Now God is going to indeed remove protection over America and uh, Great Britain, Australia, New Zealand and Canada because of the mounting sins of the populations in those countries. And as a result, God will have to punish them because he allowed them to have the richest material blessings and also for about, well, shall we say, one or two centuries now to have a dominance, political and other dominance, over the world. So now God fulfilled his promises to their ancestors, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and now... He is no longer obligated to keep those promises. That's why we see a short and sharp, not short, but sharp decline in economy and in every other way and in morality in particular in those nations. As a result, they'll be punished by having this dictator, most likely Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, unleash a nuclear blitzkrieg, short, quick attack on their nations and then occupying them and taking the remaining surviving ones into the captivity, which is called in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7, the trouble of Jacob, and it is called in the New Testament by Jesus Christ, the great tribulation. So indeed, that is why, and of course, as he will be occupying the, uh, the Jerusalem, uh, he's going to break the peace deal, as it says in the, in the book of Daniel. That's the prophecy. He's going to break it in the middle of the week, meaning after three and a half years. And as a result, as written in Daniel and also in the Gospels, he is going to abolish the Jewish Old Testament sacrifices. He's going to abolish them because, of course, he's going to Christianize, so-called Christianize, the, uh, uh, the Jewish city, the Jewish capital of Jerusalem, and he is going to basically deliver it, you know, with an irony, from the Jews and Jewish people. In any case, dear friends, uh, this is what is lying just ahead of us, and you need to be aware of that. So, whoever is going to be sent by the Europe to broker the peace in the Middle East, whoever that will be, that will be the future prophesied European dictator. We do believe, or we do uh, presume, but we are not dogmatic about it, that it will be Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg. So, uh, down the road, few years down the road, we are going to see if our prediction was, was, was with basis or not. If it is not, then still remember, whoever will be European peace envoy in the Middle East, that person will be the coming European dictator who is destroy, who is going to destroy the Anglo-Saxon world.